Welcome to Simple Truth Gospel. My name is Kirian Uzeshi. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, a very important topic in Christianity. And that topic is the authority of the believer. Or we can say the things that belong to us in Christ. Uh, if you are new to this channel, the name is uh, Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian Uzoeshi. And you can subscribe uh, so we can always inform you whenever there is a new teaching available. Uh, before we start today, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for utterance. I pray for the anointing, the anointing that teaches and enlightens. Open the ears of everyone listening and the hearts to receive your word. We propose to be both doers and hearers of your word. Show us what is you and what is not you. None of me, but all of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, like I said, uh, the topic that I'm going to be teaching on today is called the authority of the believer. And uh, this is for believers, for those who are already Christians. So authority they have over Satan. That's what this teaching will be all about today. And first of all, you know, uh, people, when they hear Satan or the devil, they don't know that Satan really exists. Uh, they think it's just a concept or an idea or something like an imagination. Uh, they don't believe that it's something, a, a being called Satan or the devil, or evil spirits, or demons. But throughout the Bible, we are meant, the Bible shows us throughout the Bible that um, Satan do exist. Oh yes, he is a real being. So do not neglect him. And as a matter of fact, Satan wants you to think that he doesn't exist so that he can influence your ideas and your thoughts. And, uh, and, and lead you to that path of destruction. So today I'm going to show you from the beginning in the Word of God, in the Bible. Remember, I call this teaching, uh, this uh, simple truth, gospel. So we, I base my teaching in the Word of God. So and, and, and I'm going to show you through the Bible today that Satan really exists. So the first one I'm going to show you is, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14. And uh, let's read. And it says, Thou art the anointed cherub that cover it. And I have said this so. Thou was upon the holy mountains of God. Thou has walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. So he's talking about Satan here. He's telling you that uh, he was an anointed cherub. So in the beginning, he wasn't Satan. He was called Lucifer, an anointed cherub. And uh, he was an angel of God until the Bible says iniquity was found in him. And how was this iniquity manifested? Uh, if you go to uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 14, and it says, I will ascend above the height of clouds. I will be like the most high. So this is what Satan says. He said that he will ascend above the heights and that he will be like the most high God. And that's when he fell. And in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, it, it says that, and the dragon was cast out, that old dragon. Satan himself, the devil, he said he was cast out and into the earth. So he was cast out. He had, he had no more place in heaven. And if we go in Matthew chapter 4, if you read from verse 1 to 11, it tells you that uh, Jesus Christ was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the Satan, of the devil. So Satan really tempted Jesus Christ. And if we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it tells us that Satan is the God of this world. 
So for all indication, even in the Jesus ministry, you can see that he casted out so many demons from people. And that tells you that Satan is really a real being. It's not just a concept or an idea. And the moment you understand this, you will begin to know his own ways and his means and devices of deception. And then, after now we, we have established that concept that Satan is really a being, a demonic being. Now, does Jesus Christ have the power? Remember when Satan went into the Garden of Eden and he, when he defeated, um, uh, uh, when he, 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 he deceived Adam and Eve into committing high treason, they handed over to him that day the power, the dominion that God gave unto them. He even told Jesus during the temptation that this power was and dominion was handed over to him. And who handed it over to him? It was Adam and Eve. So even up until this present day, Satan is still the God of this world, this world system. And to everyone who is not a believer, not the believers now, the believers have been delivered from the power of darkness. But those who are not Christians are still under the dominion of Satan. So Satan is still the God of this world. So now does Jesus Christ have this power? After the fall of man, and dominion was handed over to the uh, devil himself. Jesus Christ came just to get this dominion and the power back from him and give it back to us. So now, if we go to Colossians 2.15, the Bible says, Having spoiled all principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. Who made a public show of them? Jesus Christ. He spoiled all the principalities and powers. All the principalities and powers, Satan, devil, demons, evil, spirit, cohorts of hell, every one of them, he spoiled the, all their principalities and powers in the open place. And if we go to Philippians, Philippians 2, 9, if you read all the way to 11, he says, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and has given him a name above all names. That the name, mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, is Lord to the glory of the Father. So every knee, he said, of, the, of beings in heaven, on earth, and beings under the earth. So every being, whether it be in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth, they are all subject to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father himself highly exalted him to this level. And if we go to Ephesians, Ephesians 1 21. Ephesians 1 21 tells us that we are far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. That we are seated with Christ Jesus Christ in heavenly places. So the power that Jesus has now is far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. That's what the Bible says. And if we go to my two. 28 and 18. He says that when Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he went to his apostles and he said to them, all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Do you see it there? He said all power, without exception, all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. And if you would stop right there, you would say, okay, yes, Jesus Christ has all the power. What about me? But if you read the next verse, the verse 19, then it, will tell you, it tells you that it says, go ye. You see? So now, do we have the power? We have established that Jesus Christ has all the powers. What about we Christians? Do we have the power? That's what that verse 19 tells you. After he told the apostles that all power in heaven and the earth is given unto me, the next, word, word, the next thing he said was, Go ye therefore to all the nations and preach and teach the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ and, and baptize everyone in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost. So right there, if you can see it now, open your eyes, open your heart and see it. Right there, 
That's where Jesus Christ gave the authority to the church. In verse 19, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, when he said, go ye, that was when he handed over the authority to the church. And, um, and, and, and there are other places in the Bible, verses and references that I'm going to show you now that tells us that we have the authority and the power that Jesus Christ gave it to us. And if you go to Mark, <coughs> chapter, <coughs> excuse me, chapter 16, verse 17, and when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he said, and he told his apostles, he told them that, uh, and this sign shall follow them that believe in, my, in me. This sign shall follow them, all that believe in me. He says, in my name, you will cast out devils. Do you see that? Jesus said that in his name we will cast out devils. This is an authority that he gave to us. And if we go to Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, the Bible says, Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his own dear son. So we are no longer in the darkness of Satan because wherever there is darkness, that's where Satan dwells. We are no longer in his darkness. We have been delivered from his darkness. And we can no longer be associated with that darkness anymore. If we go to Matthew, Matthew 18, 18, the Bible says, And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. So here, he couldn't tell us to bind and lose if we don't have authority to do it. Whatsoever thing, anything we bind here on earth, the heaven backs it up. If we do anything, if we lose them here on earth, the heaven lose, is loose up there in heavens. So you can see that the authority now is, 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 is in us, in the name of Jesus. Not on our own accord, but in the name of Jesus Christ, that's why we have the authority. If we go to Romans chapter 5 verse 17, he says, For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. How much more we who have received abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness shall reign in this world by one Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By one Jesus. So we reign in this world by Jesus. That power and authority has been given unto us. And if furthermore, I can show you on and on and on. If you go to uh, uh, James chapter 4 verse 7. He says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. As a matter of fact, another teaching, another um, uh, uh, translation says, stand up against him and he will run away from you. So that word resist, people don't even know. Sometimes they are confused what it means. It means to stand up against him and he will run away from you. So we have this authority. And in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and, and 9, it tells you that your enemy, uh, Satan, the devil, as a roaring lion, goes about seeking whom he may devour. But he said, you resist him. Set fast in the faith. You couldn't resist him set fast in the faith if you didn't have authority over him. So these are scriptures and scriptures of the authority that Jesus Christ has given unto us, the members of his body. Because we are the church and the church is the member of his body. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, the Bible tells us, never give place to the devil. If he has dominion and power over you, there's no way the Bible will tell you that don't give place to the devil. So now we have established two things. First of all, Satan is real. Secondly, Jesus Christ has the power. And thirdly, he has given us that power now power to reign over Satan. And now, I'm going to teach you now how does Satan operate? Because you have to know his modus operandi. You have to know his uh, tactics, his ideas, his devices. The way that he, he goes about like that role in Lion the Bible talks about. If you understand this, then you will easily acknowledge his, his, uh, his ideas and the mannerisms. So I'm going to teach you now how he operates. The number one way that Satan operates is through thoughts. 
through thoughts. Yes. Remember that he is still the God of this word. He has access to your mind. He can put thoughts there. Even the most holy saint sometimes will find some, some ungodly thoughts in their heart that Satan put in there. Oh, yes. He will be the one that put the thoughts in you. And when you have gone in the line of that thought, some Satan will turn around and accuse you and say, you say you are Christian. You were a Christian. Look at what you did. So his number one way of deception is through thought. And if we go to, to um, um, let's, let's go to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now listen to verse 5. Casting down imaginations. What are imaginations? They are thoughts, ideas. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. He says, bringing into captivity every thought. Do you see it here? Every thought to the obedience of Christ. He said, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So how could you bring every thought? to the, who's, who's, in, who's putting that thought in you in the first place? It is Satan. He's the one that comes up with those thoughts and those ideas. And he will put the thoughts of you, those thoughts in you. Thoughts of failure, thoughts of sickness, thoughts of diseases, thoughts of, uh, 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 of fear in you. All of these things are the things that he will put in you. As a Christian, Satan, he does not have access to your spirit. But he can have access to your mind or to your thought life. So this is the way he will try to come in through thoughts, ideas. So this is the number one way. If you understand this, you will always recognize him whenever he comes around. He will operate through giving you thoughts, ideas that are inconsistent with the word of God. He will tell you about things that you will not ordinarily think about. Those thoughts will come to your mind. And if you leave those thoughts, if you don't cast them down like the Bible says here, casting them down, imaginations, they will grow. They become bigger. And from thoughts, it gets to words. And from words, it will get to actions. So that is a very important thing to know that it is through thought that Satan will put his deception on you. The second way that Satan can, the second way that he operates is through influences. Yes, through influences. He will influence other people around you. Remember the Bible says that Satan entered into Judas Iscariot and he went about to the, uh, betray Jesus. So he will influence through the people around you in your business life, in your family, even your children, even your siblings. He will influence them and they will come up with actions against you. And you will be surprised why is this thing happening. If you sit down there and you don't do anything, they will continue to go on and on and on. Because this is coming from Satan. He has just influenced them. He has put those thoughts and ideas in them to come up against you. To walk in the opposite direction from you. To always come up in violence against you. That's the way Satan works. And it's very, very important that you recognize these things when they happen. When you begin to see people, actions and their, and their behaviors begin to change against you, it is time to stand up and think and see if there is a demonic activity going through them against you. And another way is through demonic hindrances. Satan can come in through hindrances. Remember, he is still the God of this world. In your businesses, he can come in there and put some hindrances and obstacles. Now you, you, you do your work. You, you do all your, uh, uh, what the things that you're supposed to do. But the business is not going further. It is just stranded, one place. There is no profit coming in, but losses. Through, he can come into your married life and put asunder 
and put uh, confusion, arguments, unnecessary arguments in your married life. If these are demonic activities. And also, he can even come into your health life and put sickness in your body. Remember, sickness is not of God. Every sickness and every disease is from Satan. The Bible says in John 10.10 10, that he comes to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus Christ is the one that has come to give us life. So you, the, better, the earlier you begin to recognize his tactics, the way that he operates, will be the, the you will be, be in the best position to, to know how to handle him, to tackle him. And I'm going to teach you now, as soon as you recognize that this is Satan, as soon as you can nail it down that this is his activities going on in your life, or the people that you have spiritual authority over, which means the people like your children, those who are still under you, as soon as you, you make that recognition, I'm going to teach you now how to handle him. How to put him in the place where he belongs. Remember that Jesus Christ has done everything that he will do about Satan. Yes, until when that angel will bind him and put him in that, but into that bottomless pit for a thousand years. Until then, he has given us the power and the authority to deal with him here. So if you are going to be doing some prayers and pray, God, God, please send the devil away. Make him stop being in my place. He's all up in my business. You'll be wasting your time praying, praying such prayers because he gave you the authority to cast him out, to put him where he belongs. Now, the number one way whereby Satan, that whereby we handle Satan is through words. Yes, this is not a mental fight. You don't fight Satan with your, with your, with your mind. No, with words. Remember when Jesus Christ was tempted, all those, time, all those times he was tempted, he answered with words. He defeated with words. So this is the way to go with words. You don't sit down there and think in your mind and think he will go away. No, he is a tenacious rascal. He doesn't give up. He will continue to come in even after you have cast him out. He will try to come back again, over and over again. So what do you do? When those thoughts begin to come into your mind, thoughts of failure, remember when I say words, I mean the word of God. That is why it is good for us to be learned in the word of God. Know what the word of God says. So that when he comes up against you, you know what the right word to use. Just cast him out or cast him down. So the word of God, let us assume now that he's coming in your, in, in your health. All of a sudden, you begin to have symptoms of disease in your body. What do you do? Kneel down and pray to God to please take this disease away? No. Which word? He said, Jesus Christ took my infirmity and bore my sicknesses. I refuse to have this sickness in my body. I resist you, this sickness, and I command you to get out of my body. Satan, take your sick sickness out of my body. Do you see that one? It's a very simple way. You have used words here, and he understands that he is a subject unto you. That he, that Jesus Christ gave you the power, that he, you have authority over him. So when you command in the name of Jesus, he has no, there is no other option for him but to flee. Remember the Bible says he will flee from you, which means he will run like someone who is in terror, who is in great fear. So you always use words. Is he coming against you through people? Through your co-workers? They won't give you peace at work? Is he coming to you through your family members? They're always at your business? You stand up and you say, now Satan, that use foul spirits. Because Satan oppressed through his demons and evil spirits. You foul spirit that is coming against me. Through this person, mention their name, so 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 person at my job in my family. I command you this day to desist from your oppressions and manifest no more in the name of Jesus. And he, he must go. He is an authority given to you in the name of Jesus. He must flee. So whenever you recognize him, don't just sit down there and say, Oh, or, or think in your mind. Use words. Use the word of God and put him where he belongs. Cast him out completely from your place. He has no place in you. Give no place in him. 
And then you can you, you can see that uh, that all the people, all the apostles who wrote the New Testament, the epistles, Peter, James, John, Paul, all of them, there is no place in the new in the New Testament, the epistle, that the believer is advised to pray to God to do something about Satan. You will not find any. No. But in all the places, in all the instances, believers, they were urged or advised to do something about Satan. If you don't do it, nothing will happen. It will, nobody will do it for you. God in the heaven, one of the prayers that he will not answer is a prayer of asking him to do what he has given you power to do. Yes. He will not answer that prayer. So if you don't do anything, nothing will be done. So once you recognize him, this is his activities, this is the things that he's doing, use the word of God and cast him down, cast him out, bind him, command him to leave, and he will leave. He will leave. He has no choice. He, will, he must leave. He will depart from you. Remember that you are commanded in faith, not in wavering. So in, 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 in the teaching today, what you will understand that the authority now belongs to you. If you don't do anything about it, nothing will be done about it. Once you sense and you recognize his activity, stand bold. Command him to leave. If he comes back in the next five minutes, command him again to leave. If he comes back 500 times a day, cast him down and cast him out. And he must live. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you are listening to this program today and you are not a Christian, which means you have not made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, I urge you this day to pray this simple prayer with me so that you will miss hell and go to heaven. Pray this prayer now with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that he is your son. He died for my sins. And you rose him up from the dead on the third day. Jesus Christ, I ask you this day to come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that I'm now born again. And I believe that I have the Spirit of God now in me. And that I'm a Christian. Father, I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord and congratulations to you if you say that prayer. You are now a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Now please find a very good church where they teach the word of God. Go in there and become a member and please go to church so that you will learn the word of God and grow so that you don't remain a baby Christian. You will desire the make, the sincere make of the word of God and grow thereby. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. You have a wonderful and